Marketing for Artists 101. This was a presentation I did at CTNX in Burbank uh, in 2015. A lot of people asked if I could put this presentation online, so here it is. Now, I'm lucky with my career that it started at pretty much the beginning of the social media movement in a world that's becoming more and more connected. People are given more and more options for artists all over the world. Now, marketing for artists has taken on whole entire new levels of importance. So I want to share with you a bunch of the things that I've learned throughout these 10 years that have really helped me market myself as an artist. I hope it helps you. So first one, online social media. Uh, industry famous versus internet famous. It's starting to change. Before, if you were industry famous, that is way more important than being uh, internet famous. Famous as in everybody knows you, that way you're on their minds, that way when they have a job they will most likely contact you. Uh, that is the importance of it. it, isn't about having as many fans as you can have, things like that. Ultimately it's to have a successful career where you're always in demand industry famous, it's important that the people in the industry know you. However, because the industry is continuously changing and becoming more online, uh, freelancing with people halfway across the world, things like that, becoming internet famous as well has taken on a whole new level of importance and continues to take on a bigger and bigger level of importance. The thing about online social media is, uh, you know, you have your blogs, you have your DeviantArt, you have your uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever it might be, Tumblr, etc. What's the difference between your site, forums, and instant social media like uh, Instagram? Well, it almost says it in the way that I just described it. Your website is more like your portfolio. Those are the things that never change. Uh, that is the best of the best of the stuff that you've done pretty much uh, all your life. Uh, forums is a little bit less permanent. It's a bit more in the moment, I guess, because forums, a lot of times you're posting uh, work in progress. You're, you know, now that you've finished it, it's time to share with the world. Um, DeviantArt, for example, and then you have instant social media like Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook as well. These are avenues where you want to show what is happening exactly right now. Periscope, for example, that is the whole entire draw to those types of uh, social media. So try to post things that are more like in the moment, right? When it's on your website, you're posting things that are part of your permanent, semi-permanent portfolio. When you're posting on Instagram, a lot of times it's better to actually post yourself while you're drawing, with your hand in the picture, pen in your hand, and you're drawing this thing out because that's exactly what's happening right now. And for those kinds of uh, social media, where it's very, very instant, it's much more about what's happening exactly right now. The other thing is that you wanna be consistent and vary up your posts, especially if you're an independent artist, you need to promote something. And nobody likes to see a million promotions uh, back to back to back. My own cycle that I try to stick with is one post of mine will be my art, one post will be a photo of some sort, perhaps uh, when I was a kid, or my bookshelf, or materials that I use, whatever it might be. Then another post will be old art, art that I've done in the past, throwback Thursdays, things like that. And then another post will be a repost of somebody else's art. That's always very nice because you're sharing the things that you like, and uh, it's a great way to start creating relationships with other artists online. Uh, as well as shedding some light on some artists that you feel deserve uh, more attention. And then the last one is the promotional post. So 
as an independent artist, you're gonna have to promote your own stuff. You don't wanna have too many promotions all stuck together, so if you have it within your cycle of like five different posts that you do, um, it won't be that bad. Another thing that helps is when you post art, if you can relate it to something promotional and you put that into your description, um, then that becomes a lot more shareable as well because people will share it because they like the image and the image comes with a description that talks about something promotional like maybe that image is available as a print. Then the last thing is join movements or hashtags. You know, what is the thing that everybody's kind of diving into? Um, is it the new release of the new Star Wars movie perhaps? Get into that, start preparing something so that light can be shed onto your account because uh, you are doing what's happening right now. Uh, or join hashtags like uh, Sketch Dailies always has something going on. You can hop on what they're doing, do your own version, hashtag it, whatever their hashtag is, and people will be able to find your work more. Travel. You know, CTNX, Angoulême, Luca, uh, San Diego Comic Con, social events, workshops, conventions, all super important as a tool to market yourself. So if you can travel, definitely do it. Okay, you wanna go to social events, workshops, and conventions. Uh, the things that I find the most helpful, CTNX, that's been amazing to uh, meet other artists and meet other just interesting people. Then there's also Angoulême France, which has a wonderful uh, comic book festival if you're interested in the European market. There's also San Diego Comic Con, which is like the biggest, baddest uh, convention out there where everybody goes and it's definitely very very helpful to show your face there as well um, and to mingle with everybody and to show your wares hopefully get a table as well so you can display all your art for everybody to see then there's also workshops so it doesn't have to be a schoolism workshop even though i highly recommend it it's awesome it's super fun 70 percent of everybody that attends at least are professionals so it's really really great to go to one of these things and you'll be able to network with other professionals as well as the instructors because it's a small intimate setting only you know a hundred or a few hundred people as opposed to thousands or hundreds of thousands of people uh, and then there's also the new one that's been on my radar is THU seems like a super fun convention super inspirational um, and I'm sure there's plenty more constantly improving and evolving you know college is only one class in the school of life the whole world is evolving and it continues to evolve so either evolve as well or take a huge risk of being left behind uh, look at the best artists the best musicians in the world um, the ones that have lasted decades and decades and decades did Paul McCartney sing the same way that he sang when he started uh, off his career? Did Madonna, you know, sing the same way that she sang or dress the same, look the same way that she looked uh, when she started off? And of course, Michael Jackson completely transformed from when he was a child to when he was an adult, um, went through heavy, heavy changes and a lot of evolution in his art as well and we're no different you know some people can have the same style all their lives and do well and uh, perhaps create something like peanuts or a hello kitty or something like that where it can be the same and it can stay the same for decades and decades and do very very well for you but most likely not right most likely we do need to evolve we do need to change because not everybody is going to invent a, a brand like Peanuts, for example. You know, work it into your schedule. The whole entire practice of evolving your art. The whole entire practice of learning. You know, work it into your schedule. Actually schedule out a section of your time where it's meant to only learn. 
otherwise it becomes very difficult especially when you are a working professional you have a family you have tight schedules things like that you really need to kind of shove in a space and open it up just for learning but um, the more you learn the more it will help you with your life and really uh, aim to spend about five percent of your total income on learning things not just tools not just pencils and another tablet and things like that but active learning stuff like going to a convention getting a coach or a teacher to help you with whatever aspect uh, you want to improve on uh, signing up for a class signing up for a schoolism class if if you uh, really want to learn well and want to learn professional uh, education of course selling it heavily but only because I really believe in it and uh, yeah the more you spend on learning from really great teachers and really great knowledge the more it will come back to you uh, it'll fast track your career as well as your salary think about the thing that you would love to learn what would happen if you did learn it like perhaps you love to paint and draw but you've been thinking about ZBrush stuff like that or what if you learned ZBrush how would that change your career? How many more jobs would you be able to take? How much more demand would you have if you spent 5% of your salary to learn ZBrush? It would probably come back to you at least, you know, five, six times uh, once you, you've learned it. Another big part of marketing is actually how you do your work. So always do more than you're asked because one of the best forms of marketing is word of mouth. And if you do well with one person, they are very likely to help you along your way uh, afterwards as well, recommending you to their friends and their colleagues. Uh, the best kind of marketing is just to do an amazing job. You know, best way to do that is always to do more than you're asked. Uh, when I'm doing anything, I, I always try to do just that. Not just with uh, clients, but with families and friends. Um, always trying to do more. You know, now I'm in a position where I have my own studio and I hire artists as well as trying to get my own art jobs. So I get to see it from both sides. And one of the big things that I notice is when an artist puts their best foot forward and I ask them to do one thing and they do it and they do it extremely well, not only that, but they might add a little sprinkle of their own additional ideas or in additional input. That is very much uh, appreciated. And when they do like a beautiful background as well as a character, and maybe I only hired them to do the character, if they did both, then I would be able to see, oh, what kind of backgrounds do they do? What kind of level of backgrounds do they do? And if the opportunity comes up, and they have done, they've shown that they've done awesome backgrounds, then that's when I would approach them to do backgrounds as well. Now say they didn't do more than they were asked and they only did the character on a blank white background, uh, you think that opportunity would still be given to them? No. You know, a lot of times as an employer to give somebody more responsibility it's not this blind trust thing. You know, we want to see evidence of the fact that you can do it before we actually ask you to do it. That's pretty much common sense. So um, to fast track your career, to fast track uh, people knowing who you are, constantly try to do more than you're asked. Describe your art. The less words, the better. You know, when you think of tablets, what companies come to mind? Of course, Wacom comes to mind right away. Uh, art schools, perhaps you have CalArts, Ringling, um, Goblins, you know, those will come to mind right away. Uh, creature art, Tara Whitlatch, hopefully Bobby Chu, hopefully, uh, hopefully. How would you describe the art that you do? less words the better you know it's a balance of 
what you want to do and what people want. Okay, so say you love to paint creepy things, but everything that you paint is just so creepy and nobody likes it. Well, then one day you painted a creepy clown and all of a sudden that sold really, really well because you've discovered, not intentionally, but you've discovered that there's a whole community of people that love creepy circus stuff. Well, you like drawing creepy things and you don't mind drawing creepy circus stuff. So that might be an avenue that you want to pursue and really uh, brand a good part of your art as the creepy circus artist. So anybody that thinks about cre creepy circus stuff is gonna know about your stuff. For me, I love to draw weird things that are done in an appealing way and a lot of that becomes creatures. You know, what kind of creatures? Whimsical, fantastical creatures. Those are the things that I love to do. Okay, so the next one is the art of conversation. Don't just learn visual art, but nowadays you gotta learn the art of conversation. Uh, it can be the difference between having a job and not having a job. Picture the conversation from other people's point of view. I couldn't stress this enough. This not only develops a better art of conversation, but it develops people's empathy because you're thinking from the other per person's point of view now. You know, um, ask them questions. You know, everybody's favorite topic is themselves, usually, right? With important people, make sure that you're not uh, the person acting the most casual. That one's important as well. If you are within a group where they're very much looked up to, they have a lot of clout, don't be the the person slapping people on the back and like laughing super loud when nobody's doing that. If other people are doing that, then obviously it's totally okay to do that as well. And uh, you know, these are guidelines. Absolutely, there are people that are just the way they are and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. They act the exact same to their little brother and sister as they would to the President of the United States. Um, everybody has their own ideas of the art of conversation uh, and this presentation, this whole entire uh, talk, it's not the be all end all, but it is my way and my philosophy. So take it for what it is. Okay, so um, the last thing that I want to say about this is if you are an introvert, if you're shy, if you're like how I was when I started off, more of an introvert, um, have trouble talking with people that you really respect or something like that or just crowds or you know multiple people in general, strangers perhaps, try to find the comfortable situation that you've had in your life where you were very natural. You know, things just flowed when you talked with people. Try to picture those situations, try to put your mindset back into that situation and then uh, hopefully you'll loosen up a bit. So for me, it was thinking about a time in my life where I felt very comfortable and for me that was my family's house where I lived with my you know parents and I pretty much spent all my time in the basement and talking with my friends hang out there uh, so initially when I started off I would think about that situation I would picture all the people in this boardroom or whatever that I need to pitch my idea to as my friends Right, as my friends in my basement, and I'm just casually just talking with them. Now, first couple times that I did this, you know, it didn't work that well because I was so scared that it didn't actually fix the problem. It made it better, but didn't actually fix it. So I would have nonstop sweat, like back sweat or something like that, or hopefully not all over my face as well. But uh, I do remember a bunch of those times where that happened but keep stepping into that fire and soon enough you will not burn okay 
just keep doing it. A lot of times I just, in the beginning especially, when I was gonna meet my buddy uh, Steven Silver for the very first time, you know, in person, when he didn't really know me, uh, I was nervous, you know? I was really, really nervous to meet one of my artistic, artistic heroes and talk with them, I was pretty nervous. And so, just told my feet, let's go, we're gonna do this, and told my brain, shut up, we're doing this. We're gonna walk up to them, we're gonna either act natural, say a bunch of stuff, or we're gonna crash and burn, either way, we're doing this. And that was something that really helped, to be able to just turn off my brain for those very nervous situations and just go and do it. The more times you step into that fire, like I said, the less you're gonna get burned. Um, and you're gonna become more and more natural that way. Now, one of the things that I was mentioning earlier was picture the conversation from their point of view. And that uh, a lot of times people's favorite convers uh, topic of conversation is themselves. So one time I was at Comic-Con and this girl came by and she was looking at our stuff and just really liking it. It's about 10 years old at the time, something like that. And so I said, oh, is this your first Comic-Con? And she's like, no, I've been here lots of times. And then I said, um, oh, so you come here by yourself and you're a comic book uh, collector? enthusiast and she goes no uh, my dad he's an artist and so I come with him he has a table here I'm like oh okay so what does your dad do oh he's a comic book artist so, oh okay and then I go uh, what's his name and she said the name which I you know I'm not gonna repeat here but let's just say I, I was a huge I am a huge fan of this artist's work now, picture you meet the daughter of one of your favorite artists. You just realize that she is the daughter of one of your favorite, favorite artists. What are you going to say? And right away, picture what everybody else says once they realize that this is the daughter of a very famous, very highly res respected artist. What does everybody say? They say oh man, I love your dad's work, right? That's pretty much what everybody's gonna say. Oh wow, you're so lucky to be that person's daughter. Or, oh wow, I love that person's work. Um, so right away, I thought about that. I said to my brain, I'm like, let's not say that because let's not do what everybody else is gonna do. We won't be memorable. We won't make any kind of connection. So instead I said, wow, have you ever been on the set of such and such film? You know, and that film was made from this artist's uh, work, their story. And then she lights right up and she said, yes, I have. I said, so you get to like be on set and see everybody dressed up in their makeup and everything as your dad's characters. You get to see this? And she's like, yeah, it's super awesome. And we could start talking about that for a while because I'm super interested in that as well. Uh, it's being on the set and seeing all the, all the production and everything. And it was great. You know, I made a connection and later on uh, gave her some prints. She was very happy later on uh, got to get to know her father as well you know and that never would have happened if I never practiced the art of conversation to be able to just talk with people in a natural way um, and have it be memorable and meaningful so there you go those are my tips for marketing 101 as an artist um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it has helped you in a positive way. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more. And uh, thank you very much. Schoolism Live Workshops is a fantastic opportunity to learn from your Schoolism teachers live, in person, when you receive education from someone that is known for what they do, successful at it. It's learning on a whole new level. 
being taught their personal techniques, methods, philosophies that have taken their amazing careers to where they are today. The experience of going to a Schoolism Live workshop is truly education evolved. Yeah, and the thing is that I want to tell you is that I had no idea how to do any of this stuff. I and mean, that's what I want to say to you guys is that you don't need to know the end result of anything. You just need to get it started. Don't let that fear of what the end result might be stop you. And that's why most of us will never do what it is we desire to do because we're afraid of the end result. So people are saying, they're looking at a person and they're saying, okay, I want to represent, I want to capture that idea with, with, a, with an image, right? So this would, might be something similar to what the cavemen were doing, right, with, when they're trying to depict a person. You're seeing someone young and sort of the next generation and you're really, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm jazzed because, you know, that's, for a lot of people, that's me up there, right? Even as a working professional, you have to stay sharp. You have to keep evolving, keep learning. Because our industry is evolving. And for artists to keep up, or better yet, get ahead, the best way to do that is to learn from the people that are already there. Kevin Lima, and then of course, Academy Award winner, Brenda Chapman, powerhouse couple. Biggest thanks goes to them. Can we give them a big round of applause? Creativity is problem solving, meaning you have to get to the very heart of the problem before you can even begin to solve it. Hi, I'm Katie. I came all the way from Michigan to come to the Schoolism workshops today. And um, I'm so glad I did. They were amazing. I learned so much. Um, very interactive and uh, picked up some great tips and I hope they continue to do more of them because I'll be coming back. Come check us out and stay tuned as Schoolism Live Workshops visits a city near you.